Dinesh sir, can you hear me? Dinesh sir. Oh, yes, sir. Whether I'm audible to you, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. A very good afternoon, sir. Uh, we will start the session now. Uh, just I will give you introduction about uh, today's session and I will hand okay. over the session, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. We have our, uh, uh, our validatory function at 4.30 p.m. Just I request kindly uh, end the session by 4.15 p.m., sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. So one, one minute, sir. I will just give you the introduction about today's session. Okay, sir. Hello all, uh, very good afternoon. Uh, now we are uh, coming to the last session of our Atal Academy sponsored PIDES national level online FTP on evolution. So this session 14, the last session of this one is session on 14 that will be on electrical vehicles and Indian scenario. Okay, that is a very important uh, session electric vehicles on Indian scenario. That session will be delivered once again by Dr. Dinesh Balasubramanian, sir, postdoctoral researcher, faculty of engineering and center for alternative energy research and development, Konkin University, Konkin, Thailand. So yesterday also, sir, has taken, uh, the previous day, we had, uh, sir has taken one session and today also they are delivering another session. So once again, I welcome uh, Dinesh Balasubramanian, sir, so for our Atal FTP on behalf of our institution and on behalf of all our participants. So thank you, sir, for being here. Now the session will be yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Dinesh, sir. Dinesh, sir, can you hear me? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, the screen is visible, ah, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Session is yeah. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Screen is not visible, sir. Oh, now it is visible, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, no. Okay, sir. So, okay. 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 I just welcome you all to today's session on. Uh, uh, Server voice is breaking. Hello. Hello. Whether I'm audible, 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 audible. Yeah, now it's okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. I'll check with it. Hmm. Uh, initially, we'll just start with an introduction, followed by uh, I'll make you to walk through the basics of electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle technology and the recent. Uh, progress, particularly in India, because the brief manner in the speculation. So I have already gone through this particular slide where uh, people have most often discussing about one particular term in this particular scenario is the electric vehicle, which you can most often see uh, in newspapers where people are changing from their uh, internal combustion engine based vehicle to electric vehicle and it would reach its peak by 2030. In 2030, India would have uh, merely twice the number of uh, e vehicles as ever uh, what are seen in this particular point of time, and the charging station would also get increased by the year of 2025. So, all put together, India would be sustainably uh, an electric revolution. Uh, by the year end of 2030 and uh, for your kind information it would also create a major threat uh, in supplying of electricity to the house of time and uh, as expected uh, we will we might also receive sooner or later incentives for the solar or rooftop solar plants and uh, each and every household should be a self uh, sustainable electricity production unit so this is what is going to be our near future at this particular point of time and as discussed in the previous session also 
so the road to ev adoption is not similar for each and every state each and every state have their own ev adoption scheme and their own ev policies to sustain their particular regional impact so whatever the ev policy stated in delhi is not similar to kerala but each and every state have signed their ev policy adoption by starting from the year of 2019 september and from this particular date each states have uh, signed to incorporate the ev policies in their own regional condition and each and every state will receive a different incentive and for your kind information now the government have enhanced the incentive of up to merely 30 percentage and it may not be alive for next one year so it is the best time to purchase an e vehicle at this particular point of time and the scheme might get stepped down after a year or past and talking about electric vehicle population 2014 the electric vehicle population was not too high yet because the statement of electric vehicle with a huge mileage was initiated by uh, tesla by the year of 2006 and after that each and every uh, automotive manufacturers have started to think about making uh, working on their own or unit to handle their particular ev vehicle but after 2006 and later on the penetration of ev have started to extend to a greater percentage particularly in the indian automotive market and it is expected that that by 2030 it would reach its maximum peak and each and every household might have an electric vehicle as what projector at the particular point of time of 2021 and with the relying with whatever we have said earlier in early 2010 the electric vehicle penetration was not too high what about the role of electric vehicle in the overall uh, in two wheeler or four wheeler market share was very minimal and only <laughs> the internal combustion engine rule the entire market feel so but as the year keep on increasing particularly in the zone of 2020 to 2030 the transition era actually has been initiated so the transition era has been actually initiated where the internal combustion engine would get fade out and it would be dominated by the hybrid vehicle or plug in hybrid vehicle so this is what going to be happen for next 10 to 15 years so most of the vehicles that you you might seen you might have seen in road surface would completely get convert and they would all they would name their particular vehicle as hybrid vehicle and they won't name their vehicle as internal combustion engine based vehicle so with respect to what about the statement that i have said earlier here you can just see one reason news cup in year that it was updated in july 2022 sorry july 22 2021 where yamaha fesino was coming up with an 125 cc hybrid vehicle Uh, model so mah fesino is coming up with a 125 cc hybrid vehicle which was launched with a lower price so in this case you will have both the internal combustion engine and an electric motor and it is not that only ema most of the vehicles soon or later might get converted into an hybrid model just by incorporating an motor and a battery system So just by incorporating a motor and a battery system to that to their existing vehicle, and they will just count their vehicle as hybrid variant, and the total internal combustion engine era might sooner or later get completely end by the year of 2020 or 2020 above. So in this particular system, we are having a smart motor generator system, which is effectively used for a power assist option. so we will be understanding about uh, the hybrid vehicle in the detail and uh, at that particular point of time i'll just roll back to this particular slide to uh, state you the importance of this power assist and when a rider accelerates on the standstill condition so assuming you are uh, in a traffic condition and your vehicle is in idle mode and for starting from idle mode to acceleration you need excess power for a better acceleration so at this particular point of time apart from deli- deriving power from the internal combustion engine certain amount of power would be delivered from your electric motor combination to that particular demand so with respect to whatever the statistical data we have seen in this graph says that after 2020 most of the vehicles would be converted into hybrid vehicle here you can just see one best example stating that fasino has come up with its hybrid vehicle variant 
so talking about hybrid vehicle variant they won't change anything in the vehicle so they will try to incorporate a motor and a battery system to the existing vehicle so hybrid vehicle variant is also an internal combustion engine where it is clubbed with an electric motor and a battery system i hope you are able to understand with this and you can also see the penetration of ev is slowly getting increasing at this particular point of time and it is not that only the two wheeler most of the four wheelers are trying to convert into hybrid vehicle so you can uh, see toyota glanza uh, maruti suzuki baleno or maruti suzuki sias so all these variant are coming up with an hybrid mode so that we will have an engine and a motor com generator combination which will make use of an 45 48 volt mild hybrid system so in in most of the hybrid vehicle as of now they are using 48 volt high voltage battery setup only and they will make use of hybrid vehicle system and make it clear it is about mild hybrid it is about mild hybrid so we will try to understand what is uh, micro mild and uh, a full hybrid anyhow in the upcoming slides and these are the best examples that is uh, available in, in india which make use of hybrid vehicle variant and uh, tata has come up with, the, with its pure ev but you can't completely get eradicate from this internal combustion engine because whatever the investment that these companies have invested for the production of so they will completely get rid from the internal combustion engine and switch over to ev so they will be planning to use their existing system just by converting into the hybrid vehicle mode so how we are going to convert into hybrid vehicle mode and how it is having it would advantage we discuss it the latest slides and these are the best example and even for your kind information maruti is planning to make their shift and shift drive version planning to make their shift and shift desire version into hybrid vehicle mode because uh, when uh, based on our statistical data it is assured that merely 70 to 80% of the market share based on uh, sedan or and coupe model it is ruled only by the uh, shift and shift drive version so it is having the maximum population among the sedan and coupe model in particularly india and as of now they have not get switch over into hybrid mode but sooner or later it is predicted that by 2025 maruti might come up with their hybrid vehicle variant for their shift and shift design model so this is the current scenario about uh, hybrid vehicle system particularly in a hybrid electric vehicle whatever it is all have started their time scale in the same zone it is in 18th century in the late 18th century or the early 19th so that is where each and every vehicle started their career electric vehicle was uh, developed in 1832 whereas the first internal combustion engine was developed uh, commercialized in 1893 and the first hybrid vehicle was introduced to the human mankind in 1901 so which is not far from each other but only the internal combustion engine was in the entire field for past 100 years and now both the electric and hybrid vehicle have started to make their particular dominance role in the automotive market field at this particular point of time and it is very much clear that internal combustion engine will be alive till 2050 but not by the name of internal combustion engine all the vehicles will have an one additional term for it that is the term known as hybrid okay talking about the mass production it was in 1997 that toyota has come up with this mass production based for hybrid vehicle in 2000 and the tesla has threatened the over automotive market field in 2006 so in 2000 people have started to think about making use of hybrid and in 2006 tesla has come up with they will just produce only ev and they won't focus on any internal combustion engine base setup for the near future so these two have threatened the overall entire field so uh, because of this particular case only now fsno is coming up with an hybrid vehicle variant so here you can just see the transition of internal combustion engine into hybrid vehicle mode
so talking about uh, the battery powered electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle so the battery powered electric vehicle on the high energy efficiency and zero environmental pollution so as uh, explained very much clearly so this zero environmental pollution talks about only from the user end the zero environmental pollution talks about only from the user end and not from the manufacturer end so the manufacturer end would emit only excess amount of pollution at this particular point of time to handle an enormous amount of demand in near future so however performs especially the operating range for battery is far less compared to the range so the energy then the energy of a gasoline is enormously higher as compared to the battery so that is why actually the battery is lagging uh, at this particular point of time so for that what they are trying to come up with is they are trying to couple both the internal combustion engine and the ev into a single system so the hybrid vehicle talks about using two power sources so you will be using both internal combustion engine and ev you will be using both internal combustion engine and ev for internal combustion engine you will have a fuel tank and an engine for an ev you will have a motor generator and the battery so in your existing vehicle you will have all these four system even though you have all the four system the primary source would be only internal combustion engine the primary source would be only internal combustion engine assuming you are having a demand of 100 kilowatt power in this merely 51 percentage of power would be delivered from your internal combustion engine and the maximum percentage of power that can be delivered from your electric motor some battery combination is 49 percentage it says that only your internal combustion engine will be the primary energy source and your ev will be the secondary energy source if it crosses 50 or moves 50 above this ev would be get converted into the primary energy source the main objective of hybrid is to make your internal combustion engine alive for next 10 to 20 years so they won't cover or give the power of primary energy source to e and only the internal combustion engine will hold that particular uh, term and enjoy the power of being the primary energy source and what are different types of e really classified as the hybrid electric vehicle the ev is mainly classified as a hybrid electric vehicle this hybrid is further branched out as series parallel and series parallel combination and next to this term the ev is next further classified or break down into plug in hybrid vehicle and with this the era of internal combustion engine comes to an end so till the first two classification you can just uh, hold the internal switch over from a hybrid or plug in hybrid vehicle and get transition to ev so you need to pull down or push down the internal combustion engine from your shoulder and after that only you are supposed to walk away so for this particular case when talking about battery electric vehicle here the battery is primary energy source and rather relying on battery people have tried to make use of fuel cell and further people have started to explore about the solar as energy source so in case of your energy source and energy converter for an hybrid electric vehicle for energy you will be relying on the fuel and for energy converter you will be making use of both motor com generator and the internal combustion engine so even in this particular case you will have a small battery setup but that would be charged internally and we won't we are not supposed to able to charge it from the external so to charge it from the external we only will have slowly switch over from uh, hybrid electric vehicle mode to plug in hybrid electric vehicle mode. so this plug in hybrid electric mode would be most of the case a full hybrid electric and it won't be mild or micro it won't be mild or micro we will let understand what is mild or micro or full in the 
yes sir as of now this flight yes, would sir. be dominantly only full but will be sir, your voice is breaking sir internal combustion your voice is breaking yes, sir uh uh whether there other able to hear me clearly sir i myself also it is uh, acting same thing sir sometimes it, it clears uh, clear okay, sir, is, sometimes it is clear and sometimes uh, it will be breaking sir yeah okay okay sir i'll just check with it sir uh, what about the part one sir they are also facing the same issue yes, sir yes sir yes sir yes, sir. yes sir. All are having the same issues, sir. ಅದು ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಬಿಡ್ರಿ ಸರ್ ವೆದರ್ ಏ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಸರ್ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಹಲೋ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ಗೆ ಬೇಕಂತ sir whether can you able to hear me now sir clearly yes sir okay and in case of battery electric vehicle the primary power source would be drained from a plug in option and rather relying on a plug in option you can just internally create the power source by making use of a fuel cell or solar so this is how the ev is mainly classified as of now and talking about the term degree of hybridization in terms of the vehicle hybridization is mainly falls under three main categories one is micro hybrid second one is mild hybrid and third one is full hybrid so you might have seen these particular term in the previous slides so in the previous slides where you can just see uh, yamaha fasino is coming up with a mild hybrid variant so yamaha have as you know is coming up with a mild hybrid variant and most of the cars that we have seen is having one particular common term that is the mild hybrid so what is this mild hybrid so this mild hybrid is determined with respect to the term degree of hybridization so assume you are having a demand of power of 100 kilowatt so here you are using both the energies one is internal combustion engine and second one is ev and you are having a demand of 100 kilowatt power that is required to handle the end wheel demand so for rotating your end wheel vehicle you are having a demand of 100 kilowatt of power if this 100 kilowatt of power is delivered only from your internal combustion engine then the degree of hybridization is zero if this 100 kilowatt power is delivered only from your internal combustion engine then the degree of hybridization is zero and if this 100 kilowatt power is delivered only from your ev then the degree of hybridization is 100 so it says that for an required demand percentage what is the power that is able to delivered from your internal combustion engine and ev so at 
25 percentage of degree of hybridization the amount of power that can be drained from your ev is of 25 percentage and for 50 percentage means the 50 percentage of power can be delivered from your motor and battery combination and for 75 it would be 75 and for 100 the maximum power would be delivered by your ev so it means that it would be pure electric vehicle and in this controversy case at, at this particular point of end it would be pure internal combustion engine and the transition from internal combustion engine to ev talks about the degree of hybridization so in this particular classification micro and full hybrid will have a varied doh so nominally mentioned as short form of degree of hybridization or doh is micro mild and hybrid will have a varied percentage of doh i hope now you are able to understand what is degree of hybridization and this particular plot will give you a very clear idea about what is degree of hybridization and so talking about micro hybrid combustion engine and a motor and this motor would be only used for start and stop operation so you might have seen n number of two wheeler vehicles which uh your father or in the earlier stage will have a kick start option so you need to kick your vehicle and start it but whatever the two wheelers vehicle that are coming as of now doesn't have a kick start option you will have only a power start option so you will have a power button just by pressing power button your engine is allowed to get start so this is what talks about the start stop operation in most often cases you will have an internal combustion engine and a motor and this motor would be effectively used only for the start and stop operation so this what talks about the micro hybrid it means that whatever the vehicle or two wheeler vehicle that we are having as of now is not an internal combustion engine it is an micro hybrid based vehicle so if you are having a power start option in your vehicle you should name that particular vehicle as only micro hybrid vehicle so apart from this start and stop operation micro hybrid would enjoy one additional benefit that it will have the option for regenerative braking so at that point of regenerative braking because of the impedance variation your motor would be uh, feeling excess pressure and it would be get converted into a generator more and the power would be allowed to pass through a buck converter and it would be allowed to stored in a battery so this what talks about the regenerative braking so when talking about micro hybrid you will have both internal combustion engine and a motor apart from this combination this motor would be only used for start and stop operation and regenerative braking and next one is the mild hybrid so this mild hybrid would have one additional benefit apart from the previous two cases one is it will have a start and stop operation and next one is a regenerative braking apart from these two you will have an option to a power assist so that what uh, i have said earlier so assume your vehicle is in a traffic condition and uh, different vehicles have been stated standing over here so assume there are five vehicles and all five are started to get an accelerate so apart from delivering the demand you have been accelerated very fastly so apart you have you have determined what is the demand that you are going to give to your vehicle if the only the power source is draining from internal combustion engine you want to achieve a better acceleration and if the power is allowed to get deliver on both your internal combustion engine and electric motor you will you might get a better acceleration so this is what is the technology that has been incorporated in your fasino as of now so this fancy you now make use of a mild hybrid setup where particularly from a start and stop operation for a better assistance the power would be assisted along with your internal combustion engine from your electric motor so you are, you know what is the demand so rather handling that particular demand only from the power drain from your internal combustion engine certain amount of power would be added along with this combustion engine and handled by your electric motor so this one talks about the mild hybrid so this mild hybrid technique is what used for your maruti fiaz belino and uh, the toyota glance model all these will have only this particular setup and if you just see the internal combustion engine part in this particular slide here you can just see one particular term has been added to the internal combustion engine that is downsized so that is the term known as downsize so what is downsize and why we need to downsize the existing engine so it could be understood very clearly with a small math so assume you are having a car 
which is weighing around a 600 kg which is weighing around a hit 600 kg and you have been asked to convert this car into an a hybrid vehicle so if i've been asked to convert this in a hybrid vehicle what we'll be doing is you will be trying to add an electric motor come generator and a battery to this existing vehicle so all put together the overall weight of your car would get increased so all put together the overall weight of your car would get increased so whatever the advantage are the gain actually you get from getting converter into hybrid would be wasted by this added weight so it would be wasted by this added weight assume when you are just converting your vehicle into uh, an hybrid mode without any downsizing your overall car weight would be raised from 600 kg to 800 kg so this excess 200 kg will typically kill your uh, additional allowance of getting hybrid so what you need to do is you need to reduce the weight of the engine so unless and until you reduce the weight of the engine you won't enjoy the benefit of getting converted into hybrid mode so that is the reason why you might have seen in most of an uh, conversion from micro hybrid as the percentage of dvh increase the engine size would get drastically reduced as moving further and talking about full hybrid apart from start and stop operation uh, regenerative braking and power assist you will have a short electric drive to particularly run on pure ev mode for a further time and for extended electric drive you will have an additional option and a plug in option so all put together talks about the plug in hybrid electric so here you can just see the engine size have been even further down and with the engine yeah comes to an end and after that one only to lap the motor so when you are just working on hybrid electric vehicle you need to down the engine so whatever the vehicle two wheeler vehicle as of now if it if it is having a a power start option it, you can just call in your vehicle as a hybrid micro hybrid vehicle and talks about mild hybrid vehicle you will have a hybrid vehicle and certain amount of power would be delivered from your electric motor in this particular case the degree of hybridization varies from 20 to 30. exactly 50 it will be closer to 50 in internal combustion engine as the maximum load where the efficiency maximizes without the combustion engine would also be able to run at this particular point of time so in case of mild hybrid it will only assist you it will only assist you but in the full hybrid you can just completely switch off your internal combustion engine and try to run your vehicle in pure ev mode so that's what talks about the full hybrid electric vehicle and the last one is plug in hybrid vehicle where you will have an additional option to uh, charge your battery x rather than relying on running your vehicle and charging your battery so this what so about the plug in hybrid electric vehicle so the term degree of hybridization talks about pem divided by is the key classifications of hybrid vehicle based on micro mild and full hybrid i hope now that i have clearly shown this three from the performance in a simple rule it won't have a major change in its performance simply will reduce the weight of the system to the minimum in its weighing of around 1000 kg and it is able to deliver a power of around uh, 60 hp what we will be trying to do is we will be tra trying to reduce the weight of the engine from 60 kg to 80 kg and we should deliver more or less the same power so same power should be approximately received so it, this engine might deliver a same power output closer to the previous case that is 58 hp but the weight has been reduced from 100 kg to 80 kg so this 20 kg would be compensated by incorporating your motor plus battery combination so because this two will 
add an access bait to your system and you might have also uh, gone through the sessions on uh, the various forces acting on your vehicle that talks about the rolling resistive force the aerodynamic force and gradient force in all these term one particular uh, term that plays a major role is the mass of the vehicle so based upon the mass of the vehicle the resistance would increase in a linear fashion so if you are increasing your mass of the vehicle further it would create an excess resistive force and to oppose this resistive force you need to give excess energy to move your vehicle in the forward direction so that is the reason why you are most often working on engine downsizing to handle this weight issue particularly and for this particular case people have most often deal with the turbocharger and supercharger so whatever the hybrid vehicle are the upcoming vehicles or coming up with either turbo uh, turbocharger or supercharger to handle this particular engine downsize issue and this is a pictorial representation of uh, vsk type of turbocharger single shaft in the center and you will have a turbine blade on one side you will have a compressor on the other side and this turbine blade is allowed to propel by means of the exhaust gas and the compressor is allowed to increase the pressure of air so just by increasing the pressure of air you can just enjoy a better power for the existing engine itself so how this particular case is allowed to be get increased means it would increase the overall in cylinder pressure so as you increase the in, in cylinder pressure the overall power output would get enhanced in a minimal way and uh, this is the basic working of a turbocharger and as of now people are not working on base gear type of turbocharger they people are working on va variable geometry turbocharger and whatever the mapping between these engine and turbocharger is once again a tedious task and there is also a restriction by which the power can be enhanced or the inlet pressure can be enhanced that has been supplied into the engine so they they just normally coin this pressure as the boost pressure as the boost pressure assume the atmospheric pressure is of 1 bar the maximum pressure that has been enhanced by beams of a turbocharger would vary from 1 bar to 1.5 bar they won't exceed this particular limit so if they exceed this particular limit it will once again increase the temperature and it would result in density variation and whatever the uh, gain that you are going to obtain by increasing the pressure would once again fall down so So that should be taken into account when you are just working on incorporating a turbocharger to the existing internal combustion engine to handle engine down raising. And uh, people are also working on advanced techniques to techniques. Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt. Actually, your voice is breaking, sir. Okay. Hello. Uh, whether it is, uh, I think so. I can hear to hear you clearly. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Can you hear me now? now I sir? can. Yeah. Okay. and there are different mode by which an hybrid drivetrain is able to run so as described earlier the hybrid drivetrain make use of two energy sources one is internal combustion engine and ev so internal combustion engine will have a fuel tank and a engine whereas ev will have a motor com generator and a battery so putting together in this uh, architecture if you just see this very keenly the first particular part focus on the internal combustion engine and the second half focus on the ev part for your overall hybrid vehicle so the energy source is the fuel tank the energy converter is your in engine and the energy source two is your battery and the energy converter is your motor com generator so based upon the n wheel demand based upon the n wheel demand you can just run your engine or you can just run your system either from pure internal combustion engine or by pure ev or combining both the two systems so if you are just working on a full hybrid vehicle your vehicle would operate in any one of this particular nine modes 
a vehicle would operate in any one of this particular nine modes first is engine alone propulsion mode so based upon the nbuild demand so the overall power that is delivered from your in, uh, battery plus motor combination would be cut off and the power would be only handled by your internal combustion engine or the second one is pure electric propulsion mode so if you are just working on pure electric propulsion mode the doh should be greater than 30 percentage so unless and under, until your doh is greater than 30 percentage you won't be sufficiently able to run your vehicle in pure electric propulsion mode so next one is hybrid traction mode so hybrid traction mode talks about making use or combining both your internal combustion engine power and internal combustion engine power and battery electric power to handle the nbuild demands and next one is the regenerative braking mode so in case of regenerative braking mode the energy would be transferred from your end wheels to your motor and this would be reacting as a generator and thus that energy can be stored in your battery but this this won't be much higher but you need to work on n number of components to retrieve the energy from your end wheels and put back to your motor so you need to uh, vary the impedance create excess pressure on your motor and that particular energy that you gain from your motor come generator should be either boost up to flow from a higher point to lower point and store in your battery so this works on a much more complex complex but you can just try to retrieve certain amount of energy that has been wasted as a heat from the end wheels and that can be effectively used for charging your battery and next one is engine charges the battery while the vehicle is at standstill condition coasting or descending so standstill condition particularly talks about idling coasting is where you will just take off your uh, foot from your accelerator pedal and descending talks when when you are just moving in the downhill condition so when you are just moving in the downhill condition and next one is both regenerative braking and ic charge your battery simultaneously so this particular uh, arrow talks about the the case 6 where both regenerative braking and certain amount of power from your internal combustion engine would be effectively used to charge your battery and next one is engine propel the vehicle and charge the battery simultaneously so a uh, minimal amount of power would be uh, deliver from the internal combustion engine to charge your battery and the maximum amount of power would be used to propel the ENBs and engine charges the battery and battery supplies the power to the load so this is one particular condition where certain amount of power would be used to charge the battery and from which a minimal amount of power is used to handle the end load so power flow into the battery from heat engine through the mass of the vehicle so these are the different modes by which your hybrid vehicle would initially operate so here you can just see the pictorial representation of a mild hybrid so in case of mild hybrid you won't have a major change in your internal combustion engine so your internal combustion engine would be acting as it is so apart from this internal combustion engine you will try to introduce the motor plus battery combination to this existing system either on the front side or in the mid side so this Vecino vehicle doesn't have a major size in the overall profile. So they will just try to introduce a, a motor come generator and a battery to this existing system where the motor would be clubbed either on the front side of the internal combustion engine. So by means of a belt drive, they try to club a motor and a battery to this existing system. And this motor would be effectively or in most often cases used for the start and stop operation and this can be placed either before your internal combustion engine or in between the clutches so this what talks about the architecture of the mild hybrid and these are the different modes that we have discussed as of now where your uh, uh, mild hybrid would be able to work on so either it can be pure internal combustion engine mode or internal combustion engine plus battery mode or combining both so in case of traction so the traction can be either pure internal combustion engine or internal or pure battery or the power would be delivered from internal combustion engine and partially to charge your battery or the power would be supplied by both the internal combustion engine and battery so this what talks about the traction mode and in case of braking so one it can be a regenerative braking or you can just cut off the regenerative braking and work on pure the mechanical braking but in general they will try to use both the regenerative braking and mechanical braking when you are just working on and hybrid vehicle mode.
and this give you the overall uh, shanke power plot for your uh, mild hybrid drive train combination here you can just see you will have an internal combustion engine clutch and a gearbox and differential unit to the end wheels so this clearly mention the existing or conventional internal combustion engine so you they doesn't have changed anything this particular system but they have tried to introduce a battery plus motor combination on the rear side or the frontal side of your internal combustion engine so they, they will just call most often cases they will just call this as the belt drive electric motor system so just by means of a belt drive they used to club a motor inverter and an electric motor combination to the existing case so if this is the particular case this is the overall power that can be delivered from your internal combustion engine where certain power would be losses loss by means of a frictional loss and after that it would be able to pass through the gearbox where you can just work on uh, the power and it might get a slight variation but even though in this particular case there might be a uh, few losses by means of transmission and the power can be delivered to your end wheels you are able to if you are going to connect and battery plus motor combination certain amount of power would be get added to this existing system so which talks about combining both internal combustion engine and the electric motor and even in this particular case because of the inclusion of belt drive the electric drive might lose certain power because of the battery loss and this particular transmission case so this give you the overall shanke plot of your uh, mild hybrid drive train particularly uh, you can just see the same pattern in your uh, fesino 125 which is which has been learned at this particular point of time and these are the different modes by which the power flow would happen so when it is uh, a combination of internal combustion engine plus battery so the overall length for this particular case would be a so this is the power that is delivered from your internal combustion engine and this is the power that is delivered from your battery so the overall length of this particular line is a and when you are just going to deliver or when you are just going to run your vehicle only from pure internal combustion engine then this is the overall power that is able to deliver from your internal combustion engine so this is b and when certain amount of power from the internal combustion engine is transferred to charge your battery and this is c when you just see overall the power variation for a b and c a would be greater b would be lesser than it and c would be much lesser than this so just by combining both the internal combustion engine and battery you can just effectively enjoy a higher power but to en to enjoy this higher power the only thing is you need to downsize the engine or you need to overall reduce the mass of the vehicle until and unless you doesn't work on your mass of the vehicle the main objective of getting converted into hybrid vehicle would completely get into a vein so that won't be be much more effective as this is a mild hybrid drive train system so the overall battery capacity is, will be very minimal and that won't be much more sufficient to run your vehicle run the propulsion of your end wheels so it would be always suggested to have more than 30 percentage of doh for an effective propulsion of your end wheels so that might you might at least get converted into the end point of mild hybrid or it should be a full hybrid to run your vehicle in a proper manner by means of an uh, electric motor so next is engine braking where if you are just working on engine braking alone people doesn't uh, for an hybrid system people doesn't uh, focus on more on engine braking they will try to combine both the engine brake and regenerative braking for an effective utilization so here you can just see the power flow for an engine braking and the power flow for <coughs> sorry for it a regenerative braking so this is the overall power flow class <laughs> power flow for sorry for it the power flow for an uh, mild hybrid drive train combination and further this hybrid drive train combination is branched out into parallel and series so in case of parallel you will have the flow in this particular case so as discussed earlier talking about hybrid you will have both internal combustion engine and electric motor in internal combustion engine you will have fuel tank and engine so let us just start it with uh, series hybrid started with series hybrid so in case of series hybrid you can just see the fuel tank and internal combustion engine and you can also see battery plus electric motor so with these four parts you can just assure that this is an a hybrid vehicle mode but in case of series hybrid it would be more or less an ev only it would be more or less ev or it would be more or less an electrical coupling where the traction motor will only be connected to your end wheels or else the traction motor is what 
going to propel your end wheels so in case of serious hybrid the flow will be in this particular fashion from the fuel tank the fuel source would be passed on to the internal combustion engine where from the internal combustion engine the mechanical rotational energy will be given to your generator and from the generator by means of the power converter it would be stored in your battery and from the battery the power would be delivered to your end wheels transmission so if you just see very cleanly the uh, pure uh, ev so you will have battery plus motor and that motor will run your end wheel and talking about series hybrid for charging the battery we will be making use of an internal combustion engine so this is what this is the main classification for your uh, b battery electric vehicle and series hybrid drive train and talking about the parallel hybrid drive train combination so here also you will have both the energy source one is internal combustion engine and second one is ev so in case of internal combustion engine you will have a gasoline tank and engine and you can also see the battery and an electric motor so you can just assume this as an hybrid drive train system but in case of an hybrid drive train system particularly in terms of parallel the power flow will be in this particular fashion that the from the fuel tank the power will be given to your uh, internal combustion engine and it can be mechanically get coupled with the transmission system and either you can just run your vehicle in pure ev that by means of battery electric motor and that would be get connected to your <laughs> transmission system so this parallel hybrid series is nothing but a mechanical coupling whereas the series hybrid would more or less look like an electrical coupling so this would be the main difference between series and parallel coupling and here also the the place at which the motor and the battery combination that you are going to place vary for different cases so either it can be before the internal combustion engine or in between the clutch or after the clutch and in between the gearbox or after the gearbox or at the end wheels so it may have different position at which you are going to place your battery plus motor combination i'm talking about the architecture of a uh, hybrid the architecture of hybrid vehicle is loosely defined as the connection between the components that defines the energy flow route to the control ports so traditionally the hybrid electric vehicle is uh, mainly classified as series and parallel so i hope we have seen that very clearly and even further the series and parallel are breakdown as series hybrid parallel hybrid series and parallel and complex hybrid so we won't move further into uh, complex hybrid but i will just throw you a few lights about uh, the series parallel hybrid so in case of hev there are two main kind of energy flow one is mechanical energy and second one is electrical energy so in case of series it is uh, electrical coupling and in case of uh, parallel it's mechanical coupling so that what has been presented over here it can be an electrical coupling or a mechanical coupling or a combination of both electrical and mechanical coupling so looking in detail about the series hybrid drive train so there is nothing but the electrical coupling you will have a fuel tank and engine so engine would have a different torque versus speed profile <coughs> so engine would have a different torque versus speed profile the torque profile of an engine is <coughs> very much minimal and the power <coughs> sorry for <that. coughs> And the power pattern for the internal combustion is entirely different but the ideal requirement of uh, the power plant follows this particular fashion that you need an higher torque in the initial condition and more or less a constant power throughout the case and this is much more reliable to your electric motor case and where whatever the power drop from your internal combustion engine can be compensated just by running your end wheels by means of the traction motor so here from the fuel tank the power would be delivered to your engine and by means of a generator it would be get rectified and that can be stored in the battery or that in a motor of power can be used to pass to the motor controller and that will have the traction capability and from there by means of a transmission system it is allowed to run the n wheels so this is how the power flow for an series hybrid drive train look like and it is purely an electrical coupling part so the overall objective is it is an Uh, electric vehicle where for propulsion or for gaining electricity we have tried to incorporate an fuel plus engine to this existing system i'm talking about uh, the power flow for uh, this 
serious hybrid drive time here you can just see you will have a fuel and internal combustion engine followed by a generator and then power electronics and from there the power would be passed through one common point and the power can be passed on from the battery and all put, put together by means of an electrical coupling the power would be transferred to the traction motor and this traction motor is allowed to run the n wheels as described in the previous case here also you can just run this particular hybrid vehicle mode in in hybrid vehicle in nine different modes either it can be engine only battery only and engine plus battery in a combined mode or engine plus charge regeneration and the remaining whichever we have discussed it can be braking engine charge plus regeneration one main advantage is it is a simple mechanics and it is it is an optimal internal combustion engine speed because the speed is already uh, optimized easy to control and high loss would be happen with respect to ice to b because you are just converting the mechanical energy into electrical energy and this electrical energy is once again get converted into mechanical energy and that is uh, placed to your end wheels so high cost for two <coughs> electric motor because here also you are having a generator come motor and here also you are having a generator come motor if you are just working on regenerative braking this would be converted is able to pass on in the reverse direction <laughs> it will be converted into motor so the cost of the entire system by incorporating two motors put this serious hybrid in hold and people have tried to move further on the parallel hybrid and this give you the overall power flow for your uh, series hybrid so where you can just see you will have a fuel tank and internal combustion engine combining this two <laughs> combining this two the power would be delivered to your electric motor and from there if it is pure If it is pure internal combustion engine mode, whatever the electric energy that you gain from this internal combustion engine would be transferred to your traction motor. Whatever the electrical energy, kindly make a note of it. Whatever the electrical energy that you gain from your internal combustion engine would be transferred to your traction motor, and that will propel your end wheels. And if it is pure EV mode. will have this existing system but overall the power flow would be cut off at this particular point and your battery will delivered the power to your traction motor and it will propel your end wheels it will propel your end wheels so this talks about the battery electric uh, sorry electric vehicle mode and this is the hybrid mode so this is the hybrid mode where you will have a fuel tank and internal combustion engine and this would deliver the power electrical energy to your traction motor and certain amount of power would be taken from your battery and combining both two it will handle the en wheel demand it will handle the en wheel demand and this is battery charging plus internal combustion engine so whatever the electric energy that you gain from your internal combustion engine would be able to deliver or propel the traction motor and certain amount of power will be full down to charge your battery and this focus on the regenerative braking where <coughs> this won't be effectively used the motor would be pressurized to get converter or act as a generator and that particular electric energy that you convert from uh, this particular scenario would be effectively used to charge your battery so this describes about the power flow for your mild hybrid drive time and next moving further on the parallel hybrid drive train so in case of parallel hybrid drive train it is nothing but a mechanical coupling it is nothing but a mechanical coupling where you will try to combine both the internal combustion engine <laughs> both internal combustion engine energy and the electric motor energy in a mechanical form to handle the end wheel demand so the word parallel refers to the fact that the torque from electric machine is added to the torque from internal combustion engine um okay sorry for the delay so let me just have uh, a break of a minute i'll have a water and get back so sorry for the interruption <laughs>
Okay. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, talking about the parallel hybrid drive train in a brief manner. In case of parallel hybrid drive train, we'll be trying to combine both the source in terms of mechanical energy into one single unit. So this would be more often coined as a mechanical coupling. So where you can just see this is the pictorial representation for uh, the position three, where you are going to place your uh, motor plus battery combination. Here you will have an internal combustion engine. After that, followed by a clutch, and you will have a gearbox. So this rotational energy would be get coupled with your battery and motor combination by means of a mechanical coupling. So most often the parallel hybrid drivetrain would be coined as a mechanical coupling system. This would be same when you just place the position at a different points. The main objective is that we will be trying to combine both the torque into one single unit and propel the end wheels. So this is what talks about the parallel hybrid drivetrain. And in case of parallel hybrid drivetrain, as like for the previous case, it would also be run able to run in the nine different modes, whichever we have said earlier. You will have a fuel tank, an engine, and it would be get coupled in, into a mechanical coupler unit, or you will have a battery charger, either it can be plug-in type, from the battery charger to the battery, and by means of a motor controller and your motor comes generator, this would rotational energy would be con, con, bit coupled into this mechanic coupler and from the mechanic coupler the power would be transmitted to your mechanical transmission system and from there to the final drive and the end wheels so here you can just see you are having a mechanical coupler in terms of an full it's a full make it clear about the 30 to 50 or 49.99 percentage of dvh it's a full parallel hybrid drive train system and in case of your serious hybrid drive train, it would be an electrical coupling part. It would be an electrical coupling part. So this is the key difference between serious hybrid and parallel hybrid. But for uh, a real-time scenario, we are not making use of both serious and parallel hybrid at this particular point of time. So you will have a fuel tank, an internal combustion engine, a mechanical coupler, followed by battery, power converter, and electrical motor. All this would be clubbed together in this mechanical coupler and from the transmission to the end wheels. So you can just run your vehicle either in pure electric traction mode or pure engine traction mode 
or hybrid mode where it would combine both 1 and 2 and engine traction with battery charging regenerative braking battery charging alone this would happen particularly in the idle condition and a hybrid battery charging mode so both charging the battery and handling the NVs. so this is what talks about the hybrid battery charging mode so these are the different modes at which your full parallel hybrid might run in real time case and talking about the mechanical coupling the mechanical coupling consists of a tar coupling and speed coupling so even further this mechanical coupling is branched out into tar coupling and speed coupling so i won't move further into it if so you'll have a gearbox system and a fluid coupling or a multi-gear system so in case of A torque coupling in the mechanical coupler and torques to the engine and motor together and delivers the torque, total torque. Hello. So, in case of mechanical coupling, the engine and motor can be independently controlled. Motor and vehicle are linked together in a fixed relationship and cannot be independently controlled. Similarly, in case of speed coupling, the speed of the engine and the motor can be added together. So the main thing is that whether you are going to add up the speed or you are going to focus on the torque. So this describes more about the torque coupling and speed coupling in your parallel hybrid drive train. So in case of speed coupling, the speed would be added from both your internal combustion engine and your uh, electric motor and we won't be focusing much on the torque part because as the speed get varied the torque would get entirely different and the torque are linked together and cannot be independently controlled so that the torque cannot be independently controlled in your speed coupling part and in vice versa case when you are just working on a torque coupling so the engine torque and the motor torque can be independently controlled and the vehicle linked together in a fixed relationship and cannot be independently controlled because of the power conservation control. So this is what talks about the mechanical coupling and uh, not focusing more on it. We will just move into the power flow of your parallel hybrid drive train. So as of compared to the previous uh, mild hybrid combination of your series, here the power that is able to deliver from your battery is enormously high. So the battery power would be higher than your uh, mild and micro where your DOH might, might lie here above 30 percentage and with respect to this you can just run your N wheels and this this particular power flow represents for the P3 where the motor plus electric motor uh, combination is placed for the differential so you will internal combustion engine clutch and a gearbox and this rotational is coupled with your battery electric motor by means and mechanical link and by means of the demand is allowed to be had so first case is internal combustion engine plus battery more where the power would be delivered from your internal combustion engine and the power would be delivered from your battery so you might have frictional losses and you might have transmission losses and after that the remaining power will only be delivered to handle your nbl demand and talking about your uh, battery, you might have battery charging losses and the mechanical loss over here as you are getting coupled to this existing system and all put together it will have, let us assuming it will have an overall length of A and when it is able to deliver or run by means of only an internal combustion engine mode so the losses would be in terms of friction and mechanical transmission loss and as it is clipped to the motor you will have few loss remaining power would be delivered to your end wheels assuming this length as b and uh, internal combustion engine plus charge mode so once again the frictional loss the transmission loss and charging certain amount of power would be delivered to your battery so this is c as described earlier a would be higher followed by b followed by c 
so this what talks about the traction mode and particularly focusing on internal combustion engine and focusing on bev compared to the previous case here the battery power is enhanced in a better way so this results in an higher battery power output with a greater doh and that would be able to propel your n wheels and in case of engine braking the power would be retrieved back to the engine and certain amount of power would be lost as you are just connecting the battery plus motor to this existing system and in case of regenerative braking the overall power would be effectively used to charge your battery and there might be certain loss as it is mechanically connected to this particular battery plus motor combination and this is how the power flow for an internal combustion engine plus battery combination of hybrid drive, electric drive train for a parallel hybrid would be looking like and what is about series and rl combination so as of now we have seen how does a series hybrid vehicle look like and what is the power flow for a series hybrid drive train and a parallel hybrid vehicle drive train look like how does a parallel hybrid drive train look like and what would be the power flow for a drive train would be there and what is series and parallel hybrid drive train so here we will be making use of both the series and parallel into a single unit so we are very much uh, able to understand this series hybrid is nothing but a pure ev where for charging the battery we will be making use of an internal combustion engine and a generator and in case of parallel you can just mechanically couple the internal combustion engine and the uh, battery plus motor combination into a single unit so now how they have tried to combine both these cases so let us just start with uh, the fuel tank initially so you will have a fuel tank fuel tank is allowed to pass through an engine having a fuel tank and an engine so here the internal combustion engine part is allowed to be get tick followed by your hand pv part is also allowed to be get tick so more or less this is a hybrid drive train and now let us just focus on the series hybrid drive train so for a series hybrid drive train the power flow will be in this fashion where from the fuel tank the power would be delivered to your engine and from the engine the power would be transferred to your generator from the generator through a power converter the power will flow will be passed on through battery from the battery to the traction motor and the transmission system and end wheel okay so this agrees with the series hybrid drive train and focusing on parallel hybrid drive train we are very much aware about the power flow so it will just start with the fuel tank from the fuel tank the power will be delivered to your engine and from the engine the power is allowed to pass through the power split device and the power can be transmitted through the transmission system if not from the battery uh, motor drive and the power can be transferred to the transmission system act as a mechanical coupling so here the parallel hybrid drive train has also get ticked so how they are just combining this a series and parallel hybrid means just by introducing one power split device to this existing system so one power split device into an existing system this would be most often time an epicyclic gear train so we won't get uh, detail about it so this power split device is an epicyclic gear train so if you are if you are in need of converting your series and parallel hybrid into a single unit just you need to incorporate a power split device to your existing system so this power split device is able to deliver two power output so the power that is gained from the engine <coughs> can be allowed to pass through either the transmission or to the generator so just because of this particular setup you will be able to convert your existing system into a series and parallel hybrid combination so we are very much aware about the epicyclic gear train where you might have one single input and gain two different outputs at two different ranges so here in most of in cases this power split device would be an epicyclic gear train i hope now you are able to understand uh, how does a series and parallel hybrid drive train combination would be look like and whatever we have seen earlier that is either series or parallel are simply old school books even the first uh, hybrid vehicle drive train so that is the toyota pyrus only make use of series and parallel combination so they doesn't pick either series or parallel so they just make use of this series and parallel combination and whatever the vehicle they are coming as of now are making use of complex hybrid combination so i have not uh, briefed much more about the complex hybrid combination which will have still much more complex part to act either both in series 
parallel or serious parallel combination so this falls under the category of complex hybrid drive train and apart rather relying on only uh, battery from the energy source this is the pictorial representation for a parallel plug in hybrid drive train combination where you will have a fuel tank from there an internal combustion engine the power can be delivered to a transmission system or you will have a battery an electric motor come generator and the power can be delivered to a transmission system it might handle the en wheel demand so apart from this if the battery size is allowed to be get increase or if you are having an external battery pack and that can be able to charge from and charge a port point then you can just coin your existing system as plug in hybrid drive train and whatever the chevy volt that is much more popular particularly in us make use of this parallel hybrid plug in hybrid drive train combination and what is this battery powered ev so whatever we have discussed earlier focus talks about the uh, combination of internal combustion engine and the ev so then what does this pure electric vehicle talks about the electric vehicle ev was mainly converted from existing internal combustion engine so they won't dominantly or predominantly change the overall profile pat pattern of your vehicle so the profile pattern of your vehicle would be similar but internally they will make a major changes so what are the changes is they will just throw away the internal combustion engine and the fuel tank and in place of internal combustion engine they will just introduce an electric motor and in case of your fuel tank they will just try to introduce a battery so this would be the main transition from your existing internal combustion engine into ev so one greater disadvantage is heavy weight so the weight of the battery would be enormously high and for another interesting part is the price of the battery is also enormously high so whatever the vehicle you purchase nearly 50 30 to 50 percentage of price is only used for the battery so the price of the lithium is high whichever we have discussed earlier and the price of the cobalt or the metal oxide that may use is enormously high so extensive research is also going to switch over from this lithium ion batteries to different batteries and you might have heard about uh, clapping lithium ion batteries with the magnesium magnesium based uh, metal oxide batteries so at certain time uh, your engine will be running with the lithium ion battery and at certain time your engine will be running it with the metal metal ion batteries so they will just making use of metal ion batteries also at certain point of time uh, over here but in general the overall weight of the system would get increased when you just rely on the battery electric vehicle but now people are working on more advanced technique to reduce the weight so we are in the transition era so whatever uh the lithium ion battery as of now would get enhanced as the year keep on increasing so similar to our mobile phone so whatever the mobile phone that you purchase today would be get outdated tomorrow so that that is where we are in the transition era so we are not get uh, saturated as of now so we are in the transition era so the technology would be keep on increasing and that would evolve as the time scale increase and it is having lower flexibility so it is having lower flexibility in terms assume you are having a mobile phone and uh, let me also have the same mobile phone and uh, let me use it only for uh, the calling purpose and let you assume you just use for the various purpose as like watching videos playing games and other stuff so based upon the different discharge rate the battery that you keep on charging and discharge would get vary and it, it would typically have a different flexibility according to the end user and based upon the varied discharge rate the performance would also get degrade the performance would also get degrade and all put together you won't be able to charge it at a very faster rate so whatever uh, the the bev that we are going to see in uh, in this particular case over here you can just see the battery charging for a pure ev so that the starter tiger has been suggested of etars so for and uh, Nexon EV say oh, they have just suggested a time scale of 8.5 hours so for 8.5 hours you need to be idle so just by fast charging they have even further reduced the time from 8 hours to 4 hours but uh, this is one of the lower flexibility as of compared to your pure internal combustion engine or hybrid vehicle you can just simply refill your tank in just few minutes but that is not able to uh, be much more feasible when you are just talking about EV in a broader way 
so that is one of the greater flexibility when uh, talking about ev comparatively with your hybrid or pure internal combustion engine and the performance degradation have caused the use of this ev to fade out at this particular point of time and this is how the pictorial representation for your ev would be looking like where you will have a battery pack at the footrest footrest of your driver seat or passenger seat and most often cases it would be a cylindrical type of battery and uh, the most uh, in this particular case from the outboard charging by means of the battery pack to the power converter the power is delivered to your motor com generator from it it is allowed to pass through a transmission system and the end wheel is allowed to get propelled so bev use one or more electric motors for propulsion so where tesla is working for propulsion and the battery also store electricity the battery store electricity to power the electrical system in the car and the battery can be charged from grid electricity by recharging station so you might have heard about the battery swapping and based upon different ev policies which were we have discussed in the previous or in the first few slides on the news about ev each and every state have implemented this ev policy and try to incorporate more charging station for upcoming next 5 to 10 years so based upon the regional impact you will have uh, the grid electricity and charging station close to uh, 20 to 50 kilometers in the highway and uh, whenever you just purchase an ev as of now they will just try to install an house uh, outlet for this charging option so they will uh, along with your ev kit you will get along your ev vehicle you will get a charging kit which can be installed in your home and non grid stored uh, sources such as solar panels so they might have you might have an option to uh, incorporate uh, the solar panels above and with that you can just try to gain electricity and effectively use it but i assure that soon or later we might get a news in year where government would damn sure give you incentives for installing solar panels above the rooftop for a greater percentage even now we are having incentives but it might get increase higher to handle a much more demand which are you are going to face it in merely 2030 and by using on board recu recuperative braking so on on board recuperative braking is nothing but your regenerative braking so with this you can just be able to try to charge your battery and bev can potentially emit zero emission and greenhouse gases and air pollution particularly only from the user end so what actually india is facing as a major threat is uh, particularly in an highly traffic zone if there are 100 vehicles particularly high in a uh, highly traffic zone if it's if it's 100 vehicles the accumulation the accumulation of emission combustion engine bar when you are in a traffic with 100 internal combustion engine all would be emitting emission and whatever the emission that is accumulated in this particular region would be higher but when this vehicle is moving in a highway it won't be treated as a major threat so that is the reason why particularly for an highly polluted countries uh, highly polluted state or highly polluted uh, highly traffic congested states the government is uh, trying to penetrate the ev at a greater percentage so that is the reason why delhi is having charging station for every 3 kilometers and the allowance for uh, ev policy and the ev purchase scheme is better as of compared to the remaining states uh, especially in delhi because the accumulation of uh, emission particularly in the traffic congestion in the area is the major threat in india so if rather handling 100 internal combustion engine vehicle in this traffic area if you are just having 100 ev the entire emission accumulation will be reduced and it would, it would overall increase the air quality index of this particular point so you might have heard news about uh, delhi is getting very worse air pollution and that can be easily treated with this conversion of your internal combustion engine into ev or hybrid electric vehicle so in case of hybrid electric vehicle in uh, the standstill condition the internal combustion engine can be completely switched off and you can just try to run your vehicle by means of your electric uh, mode and that can be effectively used to supply charge for your ac and the remaining stuff so that what talks about the conversion of uh, ev into uh, sorry internal combustion engine into ev and handle the air pollution in greater way and the main components in your uh, bev is the accelerator pedal electric motor drive controller battery and 
the traction motor and uh, this what is the ev present as of now uh, in india and which is actually a fast moving so they are just making use of 26 kilowatt power lithium ion battery uh, under the rear seat so in this particular case the battery is placed only at the rear seat and you will have much more uh, vacant space in the front side and the rear side if you just see this vehicle it won't have the major change as of compared to the previous vehicle only they have tried to remove the internal combustion engine and the motor and outer case remain as it is and they have just worked on to increase its performance but one greater disadvantage that we are often no down is the slow charging so that is the reason why now people are working on uh, dc dc fast charging uh, where the cc and cv percentage would greatly vary and the overall charging time can be pulled down and people are also working on swapping batteries so swapping batteries can be effectively used to uh, reduce the charging time so one permanent magnet synchronous motor uh, is actually placed in the front axle and same has been repeated and regenerative braking pure electric drive mode can be effectively used because it is only pure ev so only pure electric drive mode is used and for charging additionally regenerative braking can also be used so this is the scenario of india at this particular point of time and uh, you can also see that the penetration of uh, ev particularly in two wheelers have also get increased so hero is coming up with its uh, pure ev model and tvs is coming up with pure ev model bajaj is coming up with pure ev model and revolt is coming up with its pure ev model so the penetration of ev has been initiated and they won't leave the existing internal combustion engine also so as like fast you know they will keep their internal combustion engine model and they will just add a term hybrid to it just by incorporating a motor and generator to this existing system when you are just using an hybrid vehicle model the charging time would be reduced when you are just working on eb the charging time would be higher so that is the main difference and you will face a difficulty in flexibility and the battery performance degradation so that would be the impact when you are just working uh, getting converted into pure eb but the incentive for purchasing an eb this has been get increased for merely 30 percentage at this particular point of time and this is the electrical uh, power flow for your uh, pure ev and talking about the ideal performance characteristics of a power plant we are in need of uh, an high torque at low speed and a low torque at high speed and we are in need of more or less a constant power power output so we are i expecting a constant power output for an internal combustion engine so this is the ideal power plant requirement for any uh, vehicle that you are going to choose but when you are just work uh, when you are just seeing an uh, internal combustion engine you might have seen this particular specification that your internal combustion engine would be delivering only one particular maximum torque at one particular speed at this particular point so maximum torque at one particular speed and maximum power at one particular speed so we are very much sure that the ideal torque requirement is like this so the torque should be higher at low speed and the torque should be lower at high speed so for internal combustion engine the torque is lower at high speed but the torque is not higher at low speed and talking about power we are in need of a constant power output but in this case power is also only peak at one particular point so that is the reason why you might have uh, seen uh, the economy zone in your vehicle so closer to your peak power point so closer to the peak power point in your vehicle in most of the vehicle you will have the term the economy zone or whenever you purchase the vehicle they will just always ask you to run your vehicle either uh, at a 52 either 62 uh, 80 or 80 uh, to 100 in your four wheel vehicle four wheel vehicle so closer to your power uh, peak power point they will have plus or minus 10 values so if this is the zone of 80 to 100 so they will just always ask you to run your vehicle in 80 to 100 to gain a maximum power output and better mileage so assume you are just running a vehicle at more than 110 110 or 120 km per hour if that is the case you will have reduce power and reduce mileage and assume you are just running your vehicle or four wheeler vehicle particularly in a closely congested area or 
that is you are most often running your vehicle at first gear or second gear so in this particular case also you will have a reduced mileage so unless and until you run your vehicle at a speed range of 80 to 100 you will get a better mileage because the reason behind it is as the peak power is at one particular point they have just given you a slot so in all the speedometer you will have the economy zone so this economy zone is calculated with respect to this particular scenario i hope now you are clear with uh, the term why the speedometer have an economy zone in your two wheeler and four wheeler internal combustion engine based vehicle and the need for gearbox uh, particularly in internal combustion engine is because of this particular reason so we have seen the torque profile for an internal combustion engine it is like this but the ideal torque profile is like this so to fill the gap in between this so to fill what about the gap in between this what they have tried to do is they have just tried to introduce n number of gears to the existing system so to fill this shaded area what they have tried to do is they have tried to create n number of n number of mountain curves so this is one particular torque profile so this is the fourth gear so as the speed get in, uh, reduced you, you need to operate in third gear as the speed get further reduced you need to operate in the second gear and even further in the first gear so this shaded area in your uh, internal combustion engine is treated by these gears and this is the need this is the reason why we actually required and gear system particularly in your uh, internal combustion engine and you doesn't require a gear in your electric machine because the electric machine is able to deliver uh, higher torque even at zero speeds so we're talking about electric motors it is able to deliver even high torque at the low speed condition it is able to deliver even higher torque at speed condition so that is the reason why in most often cases uh, your electric vehicle doesn't have a gear system or it will have only a fixed gear system it will have only a fixed gear system and the commonly used motors are uh, pm uh, induction motor or switch electron motors has been effectively used for your uh, beb or hev and talking about batteries now people are uh, most often cases using lithium ion batteries because they are having the higher tendency to lose an electron which has been addressed very much clearly in our previous presentation and the greater disadvantage on the ev is ev battery is in yearly case the weight of the battery was enormously high but the people are as of now working elaborately to reduce the weight of the battery but even though still the weight is much more higher which is not equivalent to uh, the previous case as like uh, internal combustion engine and talking about the energy the energy in gasoline is plenty but the energy is lithium is slowly getting accelerate but people are working or also working on ultra capacitors to bridge this uh, gap in a better way so these are talks about the uh, commonly used batteries and its disadvantage and talking about battery population now lithium ion batteries is highly preferred uh, as the near future is going to be pure uh, ev vehicle or uh, hybrid vehicle so for all these cases people people would be relying more more on battery uh, at this particular point of time Uh, no no new recent technology has been established well worth as like lithium and then the demand would be higher as the year keep on increasing and we need to rely on these three nations to a greater extent that is soil earth uh, australia and argentina and i have also brief up about the actual working of an lithium ion battery in a brief manner uh, in the previous case and uh, even uh, talking about the foreign nations that make use of pure ev as like uh, nissan leaf and uh, tesla model s make use of um, lithium ion batteries particularly in cylindrical type particularly in cylindrical type to enhance the heat transfer rate so to enhance the heat transfer rate, if you just make use of prismatic type the heat transfer would be would not be much more efficient so that is the reason why they have been slowly get switching over from prismatic to cylindrical type and even they have reduced the size in a much more uh, possible way so for a clear understanding so nissan uh, sorry tesla model s is having nearly 7104 batteries 
7104 batteries is placed under your food trust so the main reason why they have just reduced the battery size is to work on the heat transfer rate or enhance the heat transfer rate effectively to handle the battery fire issue so if you just make use of a prismatic type, there is a huge possibility by which uh, you cannot effectively transfer the heat from one particular zone to other particular zone. So this is the uh, battery presentation of your a Tesla and Nissan Leaf. And we have also discussed more about the battery issues and thermal uh, management system in a brief manner. And coming up to the end of this slide, so initially the battery pack price was enormously high, but as the year increased, the battery price have stepped down. But sooner or later, it might once again take a peak as the demand is going to rise in the near future. So as of now, we can just see we are in 2021. So now most of the vehicle has been get converted from ICE to plug-in hybrid vehicle or EV. So the percentage is keep on getting varying as the year gets progress. So this is the current scenario of uh, the automotive market share and the global energy share is also getting a better uh, variation at this particular point of time. So as of now, China is ruling the EV market share conversion to a greater percentage. So soon or later, India would also get an nominal portion in this particular series in the near future and uh, this is the news related to it so tesla is planning to install uh, its plant in india and it has been get approved and tesla has started its plant particularly in jan 2021 which is not too uh, far as of now so in jan 21 tesla has uh, coupled with an indian company and they have just kickstart their operation particularly in in bangalore and you can just see a tesla vehicle that has been tested in India and it has been uh, also stated by the government officials from the Bangalore. So I hope I have given you a brief uh, outline of uh, both BEV and hybrid electric vehicle in a brief manner uh, for this past one hour and above and I believe it doesn't bore you much in this particular session also and if you have any further queries you can just ask us off now. And now the session is open to the audience. Hello participants, kindly unmute yourself and ask if you have any doubts or clarifications needed. Thank you. participants uh, don't have any questions then we will wind it up kindly if you have any doubts kindly ask to them i think uh, one question is there in uh, chat box sir i think uh, their parallel hybrid is micro or mild they are asking about your session while it is running they are asked one question is it is parallel hybrid is micro or mild Dinesh, sir, can you hear me? Uh, sir, parallel, parallel hybrid can be both. Sir. It depends yes. upon what is the battery that you are going to choose. Okay, sir. Okay. Any other questions from participants? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, namaste, Dinesh Bali Subramaniam, sir. This is Apramaya calling from Bangalore. Uh, hello, sir. Namaste. Yeah, sir, I just want to thank you for the wonderful session, sir. Both the sessions were wonderful. Uh, my thank question you, is very, very simple, much. sir. As, we, uh, as of now, with respect to internal combustion engine, we have uh, variants like petrol engine and diesel engine vehicles. And in that, we are going to go for uh, different segments, that is uh, low-level segment, mid-range, and higher-level segment and all that. When, with respect yes, to e-vehicles, uh, what could be the uh, expected segments, like uh, uh, fast charging segment or like how the segments will be uh, going to classify it, sir? That is uh, first question. 
and second question if i want uh, more mileage what could what kind of batteries will help me or if i want more pickup uh, where like uh, from diesel engines generally will go for diesel engine for more pickup and more power in that case which kind of uh, batteries will help us that is the only question from my thank you sir thank you very much thank you for the okay. question okay 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 sir so talking about the segment the segment is mainly falls under the category of vehicle speed so you might have uh, heard about the two wheeler vehicles where the speed is highly restricted so when you just move into higher speed range you need to work on a better po- power bat so talking about the first question on segment the segment classification falls under speed range that your uh, electric vehicle is going to propel and pick the battery and the motor that you are going to choose uh whatever uh, the optimal range that you choose for different condition lies on the battery um, power that you are going to drain from your battery so this bev is more or less as, uh, similar to so assume you are having one particular mobile phone and i am having one particular mobile phone you might use it at a different rate and i might use it at a different rate so each and every battery has been defined for a common pickup and it varies according to the end user if you are just using it at a very fast rate uh, and you are just draining it at a very fast rate and charging it the overall charging and discharge cycle will fall down and the battery degradation would be higher but that is case for it yes sir yes sir thank you any other questions from participants Uh, Dinesh sir, I uh, think your voice is uh, breaking, sir. Yeah, it is not continuous. Ah, uh, brother, can you yes, able to I, hear me yes. now, sir? Okay. Yes, so sir. talking about the fast charging and battery swapping, uh, the result of fast charging would actually pull your battery performance down, sir. So that is the reason why they have not moved uh, into fast charging at a uh, very fast rate. you have been asking to push your electrons from one side to other side at a much faster rate so because of this higher flow of electron it would liberate excess amount of heat and that would typically pull down the battery performance so there are different topologies and extensive research are running at which how fast you need to accelerate and uh, there is an correlation study between fast charging and battery state of charge and battery state of health and you might uh, you might have heard about the battery state of term has been incorporated in most of the mobile phones if you are an iphone user you might have uh, click the battery health percentage which is stepping down from 100 to 90 80 70 70 and even when you just fall below 80 they have been asked to, to change your battery because after that the battery degradation would be much more higher and it may even get busted the cell balancing dissipation energy proper so based on this classification they might uh, uh, deal with this particular issue and one issue that is that is assume you have purchased an iphone and i have purchased an local net phone and we both have a charging uh, swapping option means then i will just place my battery in the charging swapping part and you will also place a battery in the charging swap, swapping part and you can take my battery and i can take your battery and the battery quality should be won't be even when i pick your battery and make it uh, operate it so that is one uh uh discovered when you just work on uh, the battery swapping if that is the case all batteries should be similar because each and different manufacturers use different batteries for their propulsion to pull down the cost and have a better output so that is one disadvantage when you are just working on different vehicles and one common battery swapping part uh i believe i have answered for your uh, question sir Uh, yes sir yes sir uh, my, my example is very simple sir when hero is having uh, a tie up with a gogo uh, so they they are coming up okay. with a network of uh, swapping of batteries sir. my my question is yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, yes now in india we have the uh, feasible uh, feasibility that we are going to indian oil petrol pump or any other petrol pump and will fill the diesel and uh, petrol at any station there will be no change in our efficiency of the vehicle 
but in case of uh, if the individual manufacturer individual OEM persons if they come out with their own batteries i think the giving yeah, uh, network of batteries for the recharging or uh, recharging facilities that might, that might be a big problem in future there that is what my question is thank you sir thank you very much for all yeah. your wonderful inputs thanks to gpt herpnadi okay. team for wonderful approach thank you yes thank, thank you apramaya sir uh, sir uh, thank you for your wonderful uh, session sir so we are very happy that uh, you have delivered two sessions for us uh, from one on uh, wednesday and uh, today is another session and both sessions are uh, very knowledge enriched and uh, they have given you have given lot of inputs regarding battery management systems and also electrical vehicles and also in the indian scenario what are the uh, cases of electrical vehicles and all those things we are very happy uh, because of that and also i hope all our participant has gained a lot of knowledge in this regard so i thank uh, very i thank i all heartily thank to you for accepting our invitation and to be a resource person for the our atel ftp for two concessions so we are very happy so i all heartily thank you know, on behalf of our institution and personally and on behalf of all our uh, participants sir so thank you uh, once again i hope in future uh, we will get a lot of uh, opportunities to interact with you again and to learn from your side sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you thank you very much and i also express my heartfelt thanks to the management uh, principal and the organizer for giving such an interesting opportunity to explore my perspective to the research for uh, thank you very much sir. if you have any further queries you can just ping me through this mail id or contact number at any point of time so i have shared uh, the same in the screen if you want you can just kindly make a note of it and thank you once again have a great day thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, uh, it's a uh, very important uh, announcement to the participants uh, we will have uh, our validatory functions at uh, exact 4:30 pm kindly take one 10 minutes break and kindly come, uh, come back and join before 4:30 pm and we will complete the validatory sessions by 5 pm so thank you we will come back again at uh, 4:30 pm thank you so much